excellent. So I apologize that the land acknowledgement wasn't heard. Let's just dive into the worship. The grace of God, the love of Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Thank you very much. I'm the Reverend Debbie McMillan. Off to my right this morning is our amazing music director, Cindy Jeriga. Back on tech today, we have Luke and John. Um, not entirely sure what's going to be happening with Sunday school this morning, but, uh, oh, there, there's Joanne. Sorry about that. Uh, so Joanne is here with Natasha, and uh, they uh, help with the Sunday school coordination. So yay, full staff on board today. Um, there are a few announcements, and your favorite person, Barb Hazen, is up here first, again, so she gets to start. Got to get around the dog first. <laughs> that sort of makes a difference. She wouldn't be happy. Anyway, good morning. I have two announcements this morning. So the first one is to um, thank everyone who donated all the food today. This is our regular first Sunday of the month donation for Neighbor to Neighbor, and we appreciate all the donations and the support that, uh, that you as a congregation are able to give us, and we are able to pass on to Neighbor to Neighbor. So thank you very much. I know it's a very important outreach that we as a community of faith do. So that's great. And speaking of outreach, it's my outreach hat on today. Um, you'll just have to imagine it. Um, we're going to have an outreach event next week. For those of you who read the loop, the announcement was in the loop. So I'm just here to affirm the announcement. It's going to be next Sunday. so. Come out on the 14th. Um, we're going to have a guest speaker. She is from St. Pat's Catholic Church. Remember last fall, Debbie talked about her tour of St. Pat's and all the wonderful outreach they are doing with the local community. And it really is a chance to see faith in action. And so she's going to come and share with us. She's got lots of years of experience in outreach work and her name is, I, but I can't remember, Debbie? Sherry Ramirez. Sherry Ramirez, I'm sorry about that. Her name is Sherry Ramirez, and she's going to be coming and presenting at the service next week. So please come, enjoy what she has to say, and enjoy watching the help that we as communities locally can give to those that really need it. Thank you. Thank you, Barb. Donna is sitting next in line there, so Donna, you are up. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to be the town crier today, I think. I have three announcements. The first is in relation to the article, read the Vulnerable Community of Faith Zoom meeting that uh, some of us attended two weeks ago. So as a follow-up to Barb Hazen, Angela Best, Debbie and my reflections on our experience at this Zoom meeting, your uh, Community of Faith Board reached consensus that it would be helpful to provide a link to viewing this meeting and also provide further information to the congregation about its origin and focus as was described in the handout that accompanied the Zoom meeting. In this handout, several questions were asked to be considered in discussions during the meeting. Signs of a vulnerable congregation were identified, such as anxiety about the future of one's community of faith, struggles to recruit volunteers, and increasing deficits. The article then went on to suggest options and opportunities to be considered to assist community of faiths in their exploration of ways to ameliorate their vulnerability. Copies of this article will be made available on the board bulletin board in the near future for interested parties. If you have any questions about this uh, vulnerable community of faith 
topic, please contact either Barb, Angela, Debbie, or myself. Second announcement is related to the CPR defibrillator first aid course. Uh, we have sufficient volunteers to run the course. It's scheduled for Saturday, April the 20th. I ask that if anyone else is interested, please contact me by next Saturday as I need to know numbers in order to inform the instructor and so she can make appropriate preparations. My uh, phone number and email address is in the announcement loop here. The last announcement relates to a follow-up of the mediator report. At the annual congregational meeting in February, I outlined five proposed recommendations based on the Community of Faith Board's reflections and discussion of the mediator report. The first proposal was the review of St. Andrew's current vision and mission statements. To start the, our exploration, the Community of Faith Board has decided to utilize the Community of Faith Profile, an endeavor that each United Church Community of Faith was asked to do in 2016 by the United Church Covenant Commission. However, it was not completed by St. Andrew's Congregation. It consists of four profiles, a financial viability worksheet, a demographic worksheet, a real property worksheet, and most significantly, a living faith worksheet. Completion of this profile is a two-step process, first involving work on the part of the governing body of the community, faith, and then the congregation. Ministry actualization is based on why, i.e., what is our community of faith's living faith story? What is ministry, you may ask? Ministry is the activities of a community of faith which reflect its determined God-given purpose. To assist us with our exploration of our ministry, our why, first the board is going to work through the Living Faith Profile, taking time to reflect on each facet of ministry as described in the form in order to eventually come to some understanding of St. Andrew's why. This process obviously is going to take time over a few months and as it requires much thought and reflection, please be patient. As the second step in the process, when it's completed, it will be presented to the congregation for your consideration and your input. For your information, once the entire Community of Faith document is completed, it will be posted in the United Church Church Hub as a source of information for others in the United Church. It is also to be used as an assessment tool to review the effectiveness of our ministry at our annual congregational meetings. At the recent board meeting, we were asked to ponder the following scripture, Isaiah 43, 19. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. 2 Corinthians 5.17 So, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Look, new things have come into being. I ask that my St. Andrew's family also ponder these words as we head into the future. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Cindy? Good morning, everyone. I have three announcements. Two are on behalf of Jennifer and Mary Ann. Uh, the first one is just a reminder that the Games, and, Games Night and Dessert Potluck uh, is coming up on Friday, April 26th. It's from 6.30 till 9, and you can bring your favorite game and dessert to share. Don't worry if you can't come right at 6.30, just come anytime before 9. 
and tell your friends. The event is open to kids and adults, and there is a sign-up sheet, uh, and they would like you to sign up on the CD board by the back door um, by Sunday, April 21st, so they know how many are coming and can make enough coffee. If you'd like more details, again, talk to Jen or Mary Ann. Uh, also, both of them would like you to know that the SOS brunch, the ladies' brunch, is uh, meeting again at South Coat 53 on Saturday, April 27th at 11 a.m. Uh, again, there's a sign-up sheet, and we need to know numbers by April 14th. Um, and then a third announcement that I have, we are running Coffee House this Saturday, the 13th. Um, and again, performer sign-in is at 6.30 with performances starting at 7. As it says in your announcement page, come for a casual night of talent, coffee, tea, and treats. I do know that the talent will show up. I'm not so sure about the coffee, tea, and treats yet. So if anybody would like to help facilitate that, please speak to me or send me an email. Uh, we also have had a generous donation uh, from someone the last time, so there is some funding available to help with treats and coffee. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. That's really good news about that donation for a coffee house. That's fabulous. Are there other announcements that have not been made at this time? Hearing none, going once, going twice. Then let us begin our time of worship as we gather in the light of the risen Christ. You can follow along in the order of service, um, or you can follow along on the screen. Why seek the living among the dead? Why stand in the tomb when we are called to witness in Jerusalem? Jesus has been raised, and now Jesus ascends once again. Jesus is raised. Let us celebrate this day of ascension with the singing of Voices United number 175. This is the day that God has made.
St. Andrew's congregation. Bob. Outlets into Gaza. Health. I missed that. Yeah, yes, farmers, definitely. Definitely. That is a lot of gratitude. I'm loving that. So let's be together in prayer. Let's pray. God, we stand before you as people who acknowledge your presence in the universe, and we are grateful for all that we have. We are grateful for all of those relationships that nourish us and sustain us, whether it's family or church, community, congregation. Thank you. Thank you for how food comes to our tables. Thank you for warmth and sunshine. Thank you for music. Thank you for shared work and ministry and hope for the future. And thank you that Larry is back. <laughs> and rather than one person in the choir saying hallelujah and all men, we say amen together. Amen. So we're going to have our children's hymn right now, and uh, for those of you who weren't here last week, get ready to do your aerobics. Uh, we're going to be singing from More Voices 48, I Can Feel You Near Me, God, Jump for Joy. So get ready to jump, if you are so moved. <laughs> because if he falls into all of our food, it's going to be easier for me to get it out than you guys, okay? So then, uh, then we'll see if we can get it to go on the carpet. All right? So let's, let's, let's stand up and see if we can get him to... Let's see. So I'm going to... Let's... Oh, now let's see. Is he going to fly? He's going to drive. Okay, so I didn't know that clouds had steering wheels, but that's, but that's good to know that he's going to drive. Okay, 
Hi, friends. How are you? All right, we're just going to have a look and see if uh, we can get Jesus to move along here. Um, Zoe, can you go to the other end and see if you can catch him? Okay, ready? One, two, three. Oh, he didn't go that far, did he? Let's try again. Okay. Okay. All right. One, two, three. Oh. He did. He did. Jesus wound up in the food. Okay. Oh. Okay, come over here. We can do it together, okay? Okay. Our turn. Yep. Come here, Scarlett. We can... Oh, you're going to try on your own? Okay. All right. One, two, three. Here comes Jesus. Oh! Jesus fell in the beans. All right. It's your turn? Okay, we'll do one more. Remember, you got to pull him back. You have to pull him back, and then you'll let him go. Okay. You got to pull him back. Like, there you go. You can hear the wheels, eh? So you pull him down, pull him back. Like, drive him forward. There you go. Good job! Okay, so, why is Jesus on a cloud? I don't know. That is, that's, that's okay. You want to hold Jesus? Okay. Jesus is on a cloud to remind us of this story. That Jesus, after he died and came back to life in the resurrection, he was taken away in a cloud. And we call that the ascension. So he rose. He does have a, it looks like he has a seat belt on here. So maybe that cloud does drive after all. All right, let's, let's uh, put our hands together. Let's bow our heads. And let's have our prayer together. And you can repeat, yep, we'll put Jesus back on the communion table. Very good. That's a great idea. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Jesus needs to pray, too. All right, so he's joining us in prayer, okay? You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you so much for sending us Jesus. Help us to remember that he's not just in the clouds, that he is with us in spirit. This we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us how to pray when we're together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, time for Sunday school. You want to hug Jesus? You can give Jesus a hug, and then I have to put him back. Aw, you gave him a kiss, too. That's so sweet. I think we need to stuff Jesus. Our scripture lesson this morning is from Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. The promise of the Holy Spirit. In the first book, the Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, 
but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. The Ascension of Jesus. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has, taken, who has been taken up from, from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Hear what the Spirit is saying to this church. Thanks be to God. Oh, let us be together in prayer. Let us pray. Oh, God, I ask your blessing upon these words that I'm going to say. Keep my mind focused. May your Spirit fill this place as we think about what ascension can remind us of and what some of those themes are in this story as we ponder your word together. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So I have to tell you a little bit about Jesus on Wheels here. So this was um, a little gift from Daisy, Ireland. Um, yeah, she, uh, she gave me this um, along with uh, two Easter eggs that had stuff in them. And one of the Easter eggs looked like Jesus. And inside there was a piece of chocolate that was in the shape of a lamb, the Lamb of God. That's what the thinking was behind that. So that's where rolling Jesus came from. He was included as part of the gift. So I thought that was so cute. So Daisy, if you are watching with your mom, thank you so much for rolling Jesus. So we have a bit of a, a strange story. And there, there, it's strange for a few reasons. I think I'm just going to say that one of the biggest reasons this story feels strange is because we didn't grow up in a tradition where we talked about ascension. Um, our neighbors across the street over at Regina Mundy um, are celebrating the ascension of Jesus as one of their solemn days, and they have communion and mass celebrating this specific day, but we don't really celebrate that in um, Protestant traditions broadly, um, but, you know, it's still part of our faith. It's, it's something that helps us understand um, some of the work that God did through Jesus. So, as I'm sitting down with this scripture that, you know, I kind of struggle with a little bit, um, I was asking, I, I was asking God for, you know, some sense of direction with this, and is there anything in here that I could possibly use and connect to stuff that's happening in our lives, or in the world, or in the community of St. Andrews? And I don't know, maybe it's just because of how I meditate, how I pray, how I read, what kept coming back to me was patience. Okay, that works. 
In this particular story, we have Jesus reminding the apostles to wait. Anybody here good at waiting? Yeah, it depends, right? Yeah, I'm one of those people I can wait in a line at the grocery store. I don't stand there like I've seen some people do, you know, tapping their foot, you know, pushing their grocery cart, you know, into my back. It's like I'm not one of those people. And maybe it's because I worked retail for seven years and I totally understand what it's like to be the cashier who has to deal with that person that's standing there with the arms crossed and the, and the foot going. I can wait. I can wait for that. What was that, Bob? You waited for 59 years. We're not unpacking that right now. <laughs> but I can wait for something like that. What I can't wait for is health results. Nothing's wrong, just saying, generally speaking, in my life, that's one of those times where I can't wait. That's when I get impatient. I need to know now what's going on. I don't want to wait. Because if I have to change my entire life, I want to start doing that now. If I'm getting bad news, I'd rather have that now. Because I think if I have that news right now, I'm going to have some kind of control over whatever the outcome is. Sometimes my lack of patience or being able to wait shows that I don't have as much trust in God and God's plan as I would like. But this whole piece of scripture in Acts is pointing towards waiting on God's time. God's time is not our time. It's not. I'm going to throw some terminology your way. And, and I apologize if this is incredibly boring for everybody that is here, but I'm going to try and use the cross as an illustrative point uh, for the theology that I'm, I'm going to talk about. So, in a traditional understanding of theology, in other words, faith-seeking understanding, there are two concepts of time, okay? One of them is horizontal, okay? We know that horizontal is connected to the horizon, so think of it as, you know, that straight line that's in front of you, okay? That particular line, the big theological word for it, okay? Chronos, okay? Chronos. Chronos is horizontal time. Now, that's human time. That's our experience of time. That's where we get impatient with waiting at the red light that never changes. That's when we get impatient waiting for news about our health. That's when we get impatient with the pace of change happening either too slowly or too quickly. Too slowly, too quickly. Both ends of the same pole on the level of chronos, human time, okay? That's where we get our word chronology from. Now, let's talk about this line here, the line that's intersecting the horizontal line. This is the line that goes from, we'll say, the heavens to the earth. 
This is God's time. This is called Kairos. You may have heard of the organization Kairos. It's where the name comes from. It's God's time. All right? So God's time, those are the, the moments where, you know, you, we've heard those proverbs that say things like, you know, a moment of God's time is, you know, a century in human time. Um, that's where that idea comes from. God counts time differently than we do. God's understanding of immediacy is different from ours. And I'm teaching you this on this shape of a cross. Who was put on the cross? Jesus. Yeah. So as Jesus hangs on the cross, Jesus is between both worlds, right in the middle of both times. Jesus is the intersection of human time and God's time. So for those of us who follow Jesus, it's helpful to remember that particular teaching. There is a God's time, and there is a human time, and they intersect at the cross. So Jesus is that point in the middle. And Jesus is resurrected in this story. And Jesus is telling the apostles that they have to wait. And he doesn't say what that waiting could look like. He, he says, For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. On my father's side of the family, so my, my Jamaican side, um, we have an expression um, that was often really difficult for my mom's side of the family to hear, but the, the, de the, the expression is soon come, okay? And it was frustrating for um, the rigid timekeepers on my mother's side of the family to hear that because the whole idea of soon come is that it's coming eventually. We'll get there. Just trust it'll get there. Might be an hour from now. Might be a couple days from now. It's coming. Soon come. So it's like Jesus is saying, you know, soon come. The Holy Spirit soon come. Don't know when. Soon come. Just wait. Well, you know, the, the apostles, you know, they're, in scripture, the apostles, disciples, they're often portrayed as not fully understanding what God is up to, right? They're not understanding what Jesus is up to. So it's not terribly surprising that, you know, they're having difficulty trying to wrap their heads around being told to wait. So they're asking, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to, to, to Israel? And Jesus says, it's not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority. So again, there's that reference to God's time, human time, and I, and I really fall heavily into this category. I firmly believe we are not supposed to know God's time for certain things. Um, I know that there are certain religious traditions that, um, you know, have been trying to predict the end of the world for the past um, 200, 300 um, years. Um, I don't fall into that category at all. God's time is God's time. But Jesus leaves the apostles with hope. He doesn't just close off 
the teaching and say, look, you don't get to know the time. Jesus offers hope and says, but you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So Jesus points the apostles towards the future and gives them a promise that the Holy Spirit is going to be in their midst. And that they are going to have a job in the future, and that is to witness to the presence of the Spirit throughout the lands that they know. They just have to wait. Well, sometimes if, if I'm waiting, um, you know, depending on the kind of news that I'm waiting for, I will pace, um, as I've told you before, and as you see, I, I struggle with sitting still, and even if um, I'm having to sit still, I'll be you know, fidgeting with my rings or tapping my feet because I just need to, to keep moving. Well, I think, when I, when I like to imagine this passage, I like to imagine the apostles are, you know, you know Jesus, Jesus has ascended, right? And, you know, all right, bye Jesus. Nice knowing you. It's great. Yeah, look at, there he goes. Bye. Okay, he's gone. He's gone. And it's like they're still looking at the clouds. Because <laughs> they need to do something to try and figure out what's happened. They're stuck there, just looking up <laughs> into the clouds. And, and sometimes I think we do that too, right? I think that when we're trying to understand something that's difficult to understand, we'll look at something and just not do anything with it. We'll just kind of, you know, look, but not really engage or ponder. Just look. Which is why I love when the two guys in white show up and say, why are you standing looking towards heaven? It's like, Snap out of it! Is it Cher that does that in Moonstruck? When uh, she, I, I forget who it is. Oh, it's, it's Nicolas Cage. Um, she she kind of smacks Nicolas Cage and, and says, snap out of it. I feel like the tone is very similar. You know, the, the men of Galilee saying to the apostles, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So in other words, you know, wake up. You got work to do here now. If you're going to stand there looking into heaven, you're going to miss what's right in front of you. If we're so completely focused on the chronos, we're going to miss... Um, if, if we're so completely focused on the chronos, we're going to miss the kairos. We're not going to see where they intersect and enjoy those moments. And we're going to miss out on the work that we are being called to do in the here and now. God is with us. We are the apostles. We're trying to figure out what the future is going to look like. Not just as a community, but our entire denomination is trying to figure that out. We're at a time of intersection. And what holds us together I like to think anyways, is Jesus. Foundation of our faith, 
We might have all kinds of different ideas about who Jesus is because, hey, it is the United Church, and we can have lots of big different ideas about who Jesus is. But while we're here waiting in this life, in this moment of time, let's try to remember Keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. And to remember that we have work to do on this plane of existence. And we can do that. Keeping our attention on Jesus and engaging the Spirit through prayer. Like the one we're going to do right now. So let's pray. God. This is a really interesting time to be church. Not just in the United Church, but it's a really interesting time to be in mainline Protestantism right across North America. Your story in Acts reminds us that there are two kinds of time in this world. Help us to focus on Jesus to keep the balance of the Kairos and the Kronos. Help us to trust you. Because you are trust itself. You can be trusted above all things, above all people, above all institutions, above all decisions, above all directions. May we come to trust you even more with each passing day. And may we wait patiently for signs of your presence and your movement. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our offering will now be received.
together in prayer. Let us pray. God, you have put your gifts into our hands. We ask that you bless these gifts so that they may in turn be a blessing to others. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, let us pray. God, all things happen in your time. Sometimes we wish that your time was faster. And we think that, especially when we think about how long the struggles and violence has gone on in Gaza. We cry out, wondering how many more lives need to be lost, how many more aid workers need to be killed, how many more children need to die before something is done that puts all of that to an end once and for all. God, we name our impatience for you. And God, we wonder how long it is going to be before the violence in Haiti subsides. Gang violence threatening the lives of all people there. God, we ask that you bring peace, a lasting peace. that troubled place. And we ask the same question about Russia and Ukraine. We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine. And we pray for the people of Taiwan as they continue to clean up after the strongest earthquake that they've had in 25 years. God, in your time, goodness does happen. Peace does come. Healing takes place. turn our trust towards you because we know that when we take the long view back we see where you've been at work. And we don't just take the long view back into the world's history. We look at the work that's right in front of us. And so we pray together for the people of the United Church of Canada in every region, especially those of us who are in Horseshoe Falls Regional Council because that's where we are. We pray for every church, including our own. And we pray too for those people that are waiting for answers, for questions that they've asked for for years. We think about families connected to the enormous sense of loss through loved ones who have been 
murdered or kidnapped connected to the missing and murdered indigenous women as May 5th comes up on the horizon, help us to stand with all those who are wondering, all those who are mourning, and those who are feeling like it's been enough time. We turn our attention towards our own community. We pray for all of those who are caring for parents, Pray for those who are dealing with surgery, surgery, recovery, but don't want any attention drawn to themselves. And in the silence of this moment, we offer our own prayers to you. God, thank you for hearing our concerns. Thank you for listening to our gratitude. Thank you for calling us to be your witnesses in the world. We say this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our final hymn is number 189, Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise, and we're doing verses 1, 3, and 5.